All righty, Gary. The next arguments I was posing dealt with a different topic, but we had to put this in a different video so you could follow along. Dealt with the evidence that would demonstrate the existence of a consciousness, or shall we say a separate consciousness from the tangible body, a.k.a. a soul. Now, I had brought up homing pigeons, and I did tell you that that wasn't necessarily the best argument out there, but did say it was something for you to ponder, okay? Now, understand, people, that you could take a homing pigeon, Mr. Joe Schmo homing pigeon, and blindfold his ass and take him a hundred miles away from home, yet he returns home. Gary did post in an argument, and, and trust me, I know your arguments before you ever offer them. That there are studies that show that they've got a built-in compass. Gary said something about iron in their brain. Okay. You know, that doesn't quite do it for me. You know, for you to find your way anywhere with a compass, you have to know where you're starting from in the first place. Mr. Homing Pigeon has never been to this starting place before. He doesn't know how he got there. So that would mean that his home, his pigeon coop, would have to emit some sort of a beacon for this compass to even work in the first place. On to the twin studies. You'd asked for links. Uh, let me introduce you to Debate 101. When you say something is crap, that is not an argument. How many fucking links do you want? For Christ's sake, you have Google too. So I'm going to go ahead and post you some links here. And I do see both sides of the argument. I clearly see both sides of the argument in the twin studies. But I'm, I, I don't think your argument was that you don't think twin studies even exist. Because twin, twin, twin studies most certainly do exist. And in fact, it is the preference of these scientists and psychologists to find twins that were separated at birth. And then they want to see what their behaviors are when they're reunited and hear what they've got to say. But a lot of these uh, different things that have been reported that really defy logic. Some people could say, and I'll give you your, your argument first off, so you don't even bring the argument that it's mere coincidence. Let it suffice to say that those coincidences are astronomical, if they are coincidence at all. Let me move on to another point of argument to demonstrate the existence of a soul. I know I kind of choked on that one. Um, Dr. Duncan McDougall. Okay, in case I forget to give you a link. Dr. Duncan McDougall. And Google is your friend. He basically concluded that the human soul weighs 21 grams. And this was reported, I think it was the New York Times... But here's another date that you can go with, March 11th, 1907. So it was it was in the, it was in the early 1900s. But scales that he had measured to the nearest gram, okay, and that was high tech back then. Weighed everything. We put people on these scales at the time of their death. It it weighed everything, including their loss of bodily fluids in case they had a bowel evacuation. Okay, actually, I found an article that did say that it measured to the nearest two-tenths of an ounce. Now, Gary, you look like a guy, uh, I can assume, <laughs> you know how to calculate ounces and grams, right? Um, <laughs> okay, well, talk, I'm gonna forget, forget I said that. There, there's, there's just under six grams in an ounce, for anybody that doesn't know. But there was a sudden loss calculated of 21 grams in the human body after death. Now, arguments are generally posed, and I, I do, I read, and I see different people's arguments against this kind of stuff, but arguments are posed, uh, and they generally deal with dehydration or evaporation to account for the sudden weight loss. But, you know, this evaporation, if that was the case, to account for 21 grams, would occur at a steady rate. 
let's say at the rate of, we'll, we'll just make up a number here, and I'm going to say, let's say theoretically you dehydrate after you die at the rate of 10 grams an hour. That does not occur instantly. It's a gradual thing, like a rate of decay. 21 grams instantly. Okay, 21 grams, if somebody wanted to have something in the equivalent of 21 grams, hold up an Eisenhower silver dollar, one of those big, huge silver dollars from the 1970s. That's just a little bit more than 21 grams. Or we can say nine dimes, because a dime is about two and a quarter grams. Instead of there being arguments, and I see arguments posted about Dr. McDougall's work, and people say, well, this, and he was a quack there, and he was a quack this. You know, today, we have scientific devices that can measure a lot closer than just the nearest gram, my friend. Why hasn't anybody replicated his experiment? I don't know. Why don't you post me a link for anybody that can contradict Dr. Duncan McDougal with scientific evidence? instead of just bloggers that say, well, he was stupid. I don't know. Let's get on to the next video where we're going to talk about rational thinking. Be right back.